All right, what's up guys? Today, we're gonna be talking about ProPresenter 7 macros. And the drink of choice today is a Coke Zero with vanilla. That's the secret, guys. If you drink Coke Zero at all, the secret is to get vanilla or cherry. It tastes like the real thing. Anyway, like I said, today we're gonna be talking about ProPresenter 7 macros. And more specifically, I wanna give you guys a couple tips and tricks on how to use macros more effectively if you're kinda not sure exactly how to use them. I know when they first came out with it, I was like, well, we're kinda already doing basically the same thing with some other presets that we basically made and we just put onto blank uh, presentation slides. And maybe you've done that already, but if you haven't, um, then macros, the idea of macros might be a little bit new or foreign to you. And there are a couple videos kind of demonstrating what they are exactly. So I'm not gonna spend much time talking you through what they are. I wanna give you some tips and tricks, some actionable advice, and then also examples of how we're using uh, our macros. So then you can just take those ideas that you might pick up from me or from other videos and then be able to directly implement those into your own macros and come up with maybe new ideas. Anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into the tips. All right, so the first tip that I have for you is to organize and categorize your macros around your service structure. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Let me break this down real quick. Basically, I'm talking about creating macros that are specifically geared to certain sections of your service. So for example, we basically have four categories of macros. We have startup macros, we have pre-service macros, we have service macros, and then we have post service or end of service macros. And some of those categories like the startup and end of service or post service uh, is only one macro each, uh, but we still categorize those basically just to keep everything separate and keep everything organized. So if we look at our list of macros here, this is what we have. We have startup, which is just one single macro. Then we have our pre-service macros, and then we have our service macros right here, and then we have our end of service macro, our final macro on the list. And as you can see with this list, they're all color coordinated and they're labeled to what section of the service they are, right? You have your startup, which is black in color, and then you have your pre-service ones that are yellow, and then your service ones that are green, and then your end of service that's red. So then just looking at this list at a glance, you can easily see uh, where those macros are and what part of the service they're a part of very easily. So I like categorizing them that way. It keeps them organized. It keeps them kind of unified and you understand what each one is doing immediately. And so a great reason why I think this comes in handy is because for example, you have our first pre-service macro, which is pre-roll announcements, which is basically you know the looping announcements that most churches do before service. This is a macro specifically for that. And then we actually have our in-service transition macro. And this macro here actually goes on the same announcement slides, but it has different actions linked to it because we're in the middle of service. So in the middle of service, even though it's the same slides that are gonna be showing up on the screen, on the projectors, it's actually playing a different purpose and we have different actions attached to it to fit that purpose. And by organizing things this way, no one's actually confused as to which macro they need to use when. It's obvious that the pre-service announcement macro goes at the beginning of service and then the transitions macro goes at you know, the transition part of the service. Anyway, so that's my first tip for using macros. Make sure you're organized and preferably organize it around your service structure. So now my second macro tip is to create flexibility within your macros. And to continue off the first tip, we have everything outlined based on our service structure, but I wanted to take that a step further because obviously that might be the structure that we follow most weeks, but then there are obviously times where we go outside of normal service structure and service order to better accommodate you know, whatever different aspects of the service, whether we want to do uh, maybe a full song at the end, or we want to show a video during the sermon or anything like that, that might be out of the norm per se of a week to week basis. And what I want to be able to do with these macros is to be able to place them in any point in the service and be able to do what they need to do. So you have to think about that. It takes a little bit more prep work. I think when creating your macros, as you can see um, at the list here, some of these actually have a lot of actions tied to them. And that's done on purpose because it gives us the most flexibility. So basically, when I went and created each of these macros, I said, what if we were starting from a blank slate? Uh, what if we were coming from anything else? I added a stage screen action. I added a looks action. I added 
a lighting cue action. All of those things, I added those actions to every single macro that I made. Because here's the potential pitfall, if you will, of organizing around your service structure. If you know most of the time you're gonna come from, you know, the bumper video to, you know, like the sermon, if you will, just for an example, um, you might feel like, oh, I don't need to change the stage display from the bumper to the sermon. So I don't need to add an action for the sermon macro, right? But what if one week you decided to do, I don't know, let's just say a song in the middle of the sermon, and then you wanted to go back to the sermon. Well, guess what? When you go back, you're not gonna have the stage screen ready to go. You know, that macro will not have the proper stage screen because you're used to coming from a macro that had the proper stage screen before, so you didn't add it again to this new macro. If you're thinking in terms of order of service. So that's just kind of a rough example, obviously, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to say in that really to be the most effective and to have the most flexibility with your macros, you need to add every single action you can possibly like imagine needing to every single macro that you create. No matter what part of the service you came from before, before, so that the one that you're then going to has everything that it needs to work effectively. So now getting to my third and final tip, uh, it's a pretty simple one. It's just utilize the calendar feature. And if you're not familiar with this feature, uh, if you use the calendar feature along with macros, you're able to auto fire certain macros at set times. So what we did is we went in here and we have a calendar event linked to our pre-service countdown video. So five minutes before our service at 1025, that countdown video automatically fires and everything on that macro automatically fires. And then at 1030 AM, we automatically have our service uh, worship macro set to automatically fire as well because the countdown will be over at that point and the first song is ready to start. So we just created calendar events for those two times and then we linked those macros with all those actions to those calendar events. And the easiest way to do that is to just go up to view and then go down to calendar, open that up. And here you can create a new event and you can set the specific time and the specific days that it happens and then associate a certain action or a certain macro to that calendar. Then when that event starts, that macro is automatically fired. So that's pretty cool, pretty helpful. I love that. Uh, we don't have to sit here and wait for five minutes till for someone to fire the countdown. It automatically goes at 1025, five minutes before the service starts. And this countdown video is actually just one that I created myself with uh, specific footage and B-roll and stuff shot from around the church over the years. And if you're interested, I actually have a full tutorial breaking down how to create a custom countdown video for your church. So if you're interested in that video, it'll be linked up above or down in the description below if you wanna check that out. So anyway, those are my three tips for utilizing macros more effectively. Uh, now I'm gonna walk through each of our macros and kind of break down what they're doing step by step. And then also give a couple more little tips, tricks, and workarounds uh, for some things, like specifically utilizing macros with video elements, which you kind of have to do a little workaround for. Um, if there's a better way to do this, feel free to let me know. But basically right now what we're doing, like for example, the countdown video, we have a presentation slide that links to this video, but that's only because we went and created a brand new presentation and then put the countdown video in that presentation. So there's no way to like directly import a video and then just drop it into the timeline and then add a macro specifically to that, which is kind of a little annoying because the workaround is kind of tedious. If you have a new video every week or if you, you know, a bumper video that you might play just four times before you get a new bumper video, you would have to then import the video it's in your imported videos folder. And then you have to then create a new presentation and then delete the one blank slide and then throw the video in there so that it's in a presentation and then you can put a macro on the video that way. But anyway, that's pretty much been the best method I've found to actually putting macros on video elements. So if there's a better way, let me know. All right, so now going through these macros here one by one, we'll start with our startup macro and this one fires on startup. So when ProPresenter opens, this one automatically fires. And this one basically just preps for practice because most of the time when we first open ProPresenter, we're gonna run through the songs first. So we have our looks that are set to worship, uh, specifically worship looks that we have set. We have our stage display that is set to 
worship. And then we have a couple lighting cues that are specifically for worship. So that's pretty simple there. So now our second macro here, we have our pre-service or pre-roll announcements. And we'll throw that on the first slide of our pre-roll announcements. And it just has some clear actions. It has looks, it has stage screen, all of that stuff. But the really cool thing that it does have on this is actually it has a music cue. So we put some music in a playlist on ProPresenter. So we have two playlists here. We have our pre-roll music and we have our post-roll music, like end of service basically. And so those are two different playlists with two different sets of songs. And that pre-roll music playlist is actually linked to both of our pre-service macros. And what that does is when I click on the pre-service macro, it actually then automatically plays that playlist. So again, you don't have to coordinate, oh, who's playing the music? Are you playing it here? Are you playing it there? Or what are we playing? What's the thing? It's already set. It already goes automatically when you hit that pre-service announcement. So when the slides start going, the music starts going. And just in case for some reason that stops, the music stops, gets cleared again for some reason, someone accidentally clears the music or something like that, it's also attached to the countdown video uh, macro. So when the countdown video is fired, that music either keeps going or starts again if it had been cleared previously. And then also talking about our pre-service countdown video, it is scheduled for 1025 AM, like I mentioned before, but we also have the video and the macro here, just in case they need to fire it, it's in the playlist anyway, we just go ahead and add it, even though most likely they're not gonna have to do that. And now we move on to our service macro, starting with worship, so that one again is automatically fired at 10.30, but we also just go ahead and add it to every single song anyway, it's not gonna cause any harm, it's not gonna do anything, it's gonna be a smooth transition still from song to song. And so we have our lighting cues, we have our stage display, we have our clears, and uh, and our looks for live stream and things like that. And that's basically what our worship macro looks like. And then moving on to our transition macros, again, it's, it goes on the very first slide of those announcements that we go through during the transition period. But those actions are a little bit different based on what they need to do at that point in the service. And on this one, again, it's just a clear all look, stage screen, and lighting cue. And now to our video or bumper macro that we hit every time we play a video. So if we don't decide to import the video and then import it into a new presentation, all by itself this is what it will look like we just created a blank slide with this macro so we could just drag and drop this blank slide in front of any video if we wanted to if it was just a one time we're playing that video or for bumper videos that we might only use three or four times you know they don't have to import it and then create a new presentation and then delete the original empty slide and then put the video in there and then put it in the playlist they can just import the video put the video in the playlist and then just drop this one or copy it over from the previous week. Copy the blank slide over and then you got your macro or they could just go down and hit the video macro themselves because you don't need anything in the playlist to obviously fire macros, but sometimes it is helpful just to remember to hit it because I think most of the time, if it's not just right there step by step in the playlist, are you gonna remember to hit it? Eh, you know. You never know so you could you could easily forget so we just have a slide here um, that we'll sometimes put in front of videos if the video isn't going to be played on a routine regular basis and this video macro obviously has the clear all the looks the stage screen and lighting cues and then we have our sermon macro which we place at the beginning of every sermon powerpoint on the first slide and this one has obviously all the same actions that the last couple have had but just specifically for the sermons so obviously for this one the stage screen changes and then you have the the looks change, the TV turns on, so his PowerPoint is up there on the TV next to him, and then lighting cues and stuff like that. And then the last little extra action that is tied to this macro is a sermon clock, which starts at 30 minutes and counts down from there as soon as that macro is hit. Then our last macro here is the service end macro, and we have that one tied to this little video that just says, thanks for joining us today, see you next week. And that one, again, fires the post-roll music playlist that fires a completely different playlist uh, for the end of service and changes that, you know, couple other actions and stuff as well and that's how we end out service with that macro right there so i hope you enjoyed that run through of what our macros look like and hopefully you took some inspiration for this and you're able to create some better macros for your own church uh, that utilize the power of macros and put them to your use effectively and if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments below i'd love to hear what kind of questions you have if there's any additional videos i should make specifically on macros and using different features to automate different actions and things like that you know you can get lost in the weeds with a lot of different pro presenter uh, settings and uh, features that they 
have. And it's awesome because it, it's really helpful and it helps make our job easier and helps the service go smoother. And if this video helped you out in any way, please hit the like button uh, because it helps push this video to new people so that they can get value out of it as well. And if you wanna learn more about ProPresenter, I'm actually putting together a course all about getting started with ProPresenter 7 fast to get you up and running very quickly in no time at all. It's called the ProPresenter 7 Quick Start Guide and you can check it out by clicking the first link in the description below. It's not finished yet, but if you pre-order it, you'll be the first one to get it in your hands once it comes out. Uh, if you can't wait until then, there's also a link down there where you can actually schedule a call with me and we can walk you through step-by-step -step how to set ProPresenter 7 up so that you can right away from week one start using ProPresenter 7 effectively in your church. So if you've been struggling with ProPresenter 7 or you've looked into it and it seems daunting to get a hold of because let's face it, it's a lot different than ProPresenter 6. So if you want a quick start, uh, your process with ProPresenter 7, then click the link in the description below and we can even set up a call and I can walk you through it myself. So anyway, I think that's going to wrap things up for me here. Hope you enjoyed this one. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.